What's up guys, so today we're going to be making a karambit style knife using fairly common tools. The two main power tools I'm going to be using is a four and a half inch angle grinder and a battery operated drill. I'm going to be doing heat treating on this knife and a regular old charcoal grill using firewood. The steel I'm going to be using is 1080 by 3 16 by one and a half. That's one and a half inches wide and 3 16 of an inch thick. I'm also going to be using some common hand tools, mainly some files. So I'm going to be using a bunch of different files during this build. I'm going to be using a flat file, a round file, a half round file, and a couple of chainsaw files. And I'll just use my good old pocket knife to cut out my paper template. And this design isn't anything fancy, it's just something that I drew up that would fit on the piece of steel that I have. A paper karambit. Since I'm not really going to be using any belts for this, I'm going to use spray tack in order to uh, attach my design to the piece of steel. Now I think the most challenging part of this build is going to be getting this hole as perfect as possible, especially if you're only using a drill and some files like we're doing today. So I'm going to focus on this part first. Now because large drill bits are hugely expensive, I'm going to do the rest with a file. So the process of hand filing uh, this thumb hole here took about 45 minutes. Not too bad in the grand scheme of things. Honestly, if I had a drill bit that was the size of this, I probably would have put it in the drill press and drilled it. Uh, hand filing isn't a whole lot of fun, but it will get the job done. So again, I used a combination of half round files, flat files, round files, and chainsaw files for this build. One of the most useful files that I used for this entire build was actually a couple of chainsaw files. They're great for getting in relatively tight radiuses, and they're just all around good files to have for this type of project. All right, so the hole is nearing completion. It's not completely round yet, but I'm hoping that I can fine tune everything after I cut out the design. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an eighth inch cut off disc on the angle grinder and cut out the design. So as far as grinder attachments go for this build, I used quarter inch discs, eighth inch discs, a hardened wire brush that you'll see later on. I also used a flap disc. I believe it was 120 grit flap disc. I'll put links to all of this stuff down below. All right, so I still have some more work to do on this back portion here, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the front portion and start cutting in my bevels. I'm gonna go back later and fine tune everything because honestly, if I mess up the front portion like super bad and ruin the knife, I don't wanna have hours and hours and hours onto the back end of this thing if it doesn't work out.
that was a lot of filing. I'm just gonna scribe a quick center line. I don't know if that's gonna come up on the camera, but that's gonna be our grind line. So now I think it's time to uh, put the quarter inch disc back on the grinder and start grinding in some bevels. So I'm just using a quarter inch disc here to grind in my bevels. I am paying particularly close attention to my plunge line area. I don't want to work too far back into uh, the handle portion of the knife with a grinder. I'm going to come back later and clean that plunge line area up with a file. And here I'm using a flap disc to sort of round everything over. This is going to give everything a nice convex grind. And then back to the chainsaw file for the choil. These chainsaw files are just excellent files. I couldn't recommend them enough. Pick up a couple in a couple of different sizes and you will not regret it. And here I am with a flat file cleaning up the plunge line area. It's much easier to do the plunge lines after you do your grinding with the grinder. There's just a lot less metal to remove with a file. And then on to giving everything a nice hand sand to 220 grit. So as nice as this thing looks with all of the corners nice and crisp and everything um, and squared off, it's just not super comfortable in the hand if I can hold it right. The corners kind of dig into your skin and it's just it's just not a comfortable, you know, to have these sharp corners here. So I'm going to have to round them off and then hit it with 220 grit again and then uh, work my way up to 600 grit and then it'll be on to the heat treating. I'm just going to use a uh, kind of a draw file technique where I hold the file and then just drag it along the surface of the corner and it seems to do a really nice job of rounding over corners without getting too aggressive and uh, making like indentations into the steel. So I got about another hour's worth of hand sanding to do. And I know hand sanding is everybody's favorite thing to watch, so. Alrighty, it's time to heat treat. So in order to do this, you're gonna need something you can build a fire in. It doesn't have to be a grill. It doesn't have to be a small grill like this. It could even be a small fire pit. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the fire doesn't have to be super huge in order for you to heat treat a knife in it. Another thing that you want is some way to uh, force air into the fire. This is just a small heat gun. Well, it's not really a small heat gun, but this is a heat gun. And you could also substitute a heat gun with a hair dryer. Just something to uh, force the air into the fire to make it hotter. Uh, the, this will kind of uh, be demonstrated later on. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Something else you're gonna need is some oil. This is canola oil. Uh, you don't need this much. You just need enough to submerge the blade in preferably a metal container. You don't wanna use plastic because uh, hot oil burns through or melts the plastic. And if you uh, get hot oil everywhere, especially canola oil, and it bursts into flames, well, you can imagine the consequences. Another thing you're gonna need is a magnet. This is just a regular, see if this is focusing. This is just a regular magnet from Home Depot stuck on a, uh, this is just a wrench extension, but it's just a piece of metal. So you're going to want to preheat your oil. You can do that a couple ways. You can just set this on a burner or something. A small camp stove works. Or you can take a scrap piece of steel like this and heat this uh, scrap piece of steel and then submerge that in the oil a couple times and that'll preheat your oil.
So I'll just stick this in the oil to preheat our oil. We'll do this a couple times to get our oil up to temperature. It smells like french fries. I'll tell you, that is one hot fire. All right, so our knife is ready for the heat treating. We're gonna go ahead and stick us in the coals and keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. Stick that right on a bed of coals there. Now we'll uh, start adding some air. Woo, that is hot. Now we're in uh, daylight out here, so it's gonna be really difficult to tell the temperature of the steel based on the color. So I'm gonna be relying completely on the magnet. Once it's not magnetic, which I believe it already is, it's only been a couple seconds, um, we're just gonna have to put it back in there for a little bit longer and then we'll do our quench and hopefully we guess right. I'm confident that it's, oh yeah, that, that's hot. Not magnetic all the way through. <laughs> no problem. Ow, oh, that's hot. Man, you definitely wanna bring gloves doing this. All right, time for the quench. I believe we are plenty hot. Oh yeah, we're hot. Oh yeah, I believe that's a good hard blade. No warps as far as I can tell. Hopefully we didn't get any cracking or anything like that. We'll just set it back here in the oil to cool down. Just set this off to the side and allow it to cool. All right, so now we'll get this knife inside into the oven. I'm gonna temper it at 400 degrees and then we'll come back out and we'll finish it. All right guys, so here's what the knife looks like after heat treating. We've tempered this at 400 degrees inside our home oven. And now it's time to do all of the hand sanding on the flats. We're gonna do that up to 600 grit and then we're gonna go on to the primary bevel, which is this bevel here, the bevel we've already cut in. I'm gonna take that up to a mirror polish using 1500 grit sandpaper and polish it with leather and polishing or buffing compound. So look how fast that rusted. From the time that it took me to sand one side of the blade and then flipped it over, the other side had rusted already. And I uh, made an absolute mess. So I hand sanded this knife to 600 grit, which is usually the finish that I do on most of the knives. It leaves a nice satin finish, and if you like this finish, you can be done here, but I decided to experiment a little bit with my finishes. So I did a vinegar soak on this and I'm not real sure I like it that much. Um, I was going for the same look that this knife has on it, which this actually looks kind of nice. And I don't know why it didn't really turn out the same way, but there's just something about it that doesn't look right to me. So I'm gonna end up going back to the grinder. I'm gonna put a wire wheel on the grinder and put a sort of a satiny burnished look on this knife with a wire wheel. This is basically a hardened wire steel brush that you can get for an angle grinder and it leaves a almost kind of a burnish finish on the knife. It's really industrial looking I think. This finish actually resists corrosion fairly well. It's easy to do and I kind of like it. So I know I'm gonna be asked how I sharpen this knife, and the truth is, is that just from the process of hand sanding the finish, I apex the blade and sharpened the knife. So basically, it was done with sandpaper. And then finally, stropped on my DIY strop. I will do a more detailed video on how to sharpen a blade like this in the near future.
So I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm trapped out here. Hope this passes soon.